thanks for being here. Uh, my name is Molly Gillespie. I'm the Director of Communications with the Village Buffalo Grove. Um, we're here tonight because the Village has a lot going on this year. Uh, we are moving BG forward, and that is the umbrella that we are um, really encompassing a lot of the initiatives that we have going on this year. Uh, we have a new strategic plan that is underway right now. We have a new comprehensive plan that's underway. You're probably like, what is the difference between those two things? A comprehensive plan is more of uh, land use, some of the physical attributes of the community. It's a long-term plan, 15, 20 years. A strategic plan is a shorter term plan, but really with some long-term vision involved um, that really helps guide our policy as a village. Um, and then this community branding initiative that we'll be talking about specifically tonight um, is really wrapping our heads around what is the village's identity and how can we bring that to life and make sure that um, everyone knows it, not just our community. You know, uh, it brings some community pride, but also uh, what other people think of us outside, whether they've been here or not. Um, and we're going to dive way more into that, but I just wanted to let you know that these three initiatives under the BB Forward, if you want to learn more about them, you can go to bbg.org slash forward. We also have a sign-up sheet on there, so if you want to know about anything else we have planned, um, we'll have your email, we can contact you and let you know see many familiar faces here tonight, so maybe that's how you found out about this meeting. Uh, but thank you for being here, and I do want to turn it over to our partners at North Star to kick off a presentation, and then we, um, when you have questions, if you want to introduce yourself, but we will have questions for you after the presentation, so stay tuned. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Molly. Uh, appreciate you guys all coming here tonight. Uh, my name is Sam. I've got Chad and Roberto here with me as well. Uh, we're with a company called North Star Place Branding. We're based out of Jacksonville, Florida, and all we do is municipality branding. Uh, we've done this in 250 cities throughout 46 different states, and all we do is go into communities, much like yourselves, and try to figure out what is the brand that already exists, and then how do we make that shine a little bit brighter? How do we tell your story the best way possible so that as residents look to move in or as new business looks to come in, uh, we just have our, our best foot forward and we're able to quickly and succinctly tell our story and that uh, as people from the outside uh, do a quick search on Buffalo Grove to know exactly what's here, what it stands for, what it represents and, and kind of some of the history as well. Uh, so we will uh, we'll dive into a lot of these things but uh, uh, we got here Monday evening, we're here all the way through tomorrow. It's been nice to spend a few days here in Buffalo Grove and experience what you guys have to offer, see the true beauty that lies within the village, and just interact with a whole lot of people like yourselves. So we've been doing a lot of focus groups, one-on-one -on -one interviews at Village Hall for the last couple of days, and we'll do so again tomorrow. Uh, and it's just been great to see uh, you know, who represents the village of Buffalo Grove. So why branding? Why now? Uh, Molly kind of touched on, on a few of those things as to all the changes that are taking place. Uh, and especially with some of the future developments and some of the future plans that, that we're trying to get underway, uh, it's, it is important for uh, outsiders to be able to do a quick search and see that uh, all different departments of the government are operating from the same wheelhouse or speaking from the same mouthpiece and just have all of their efforts aligned so that uh, it's one less barrier for those outsiders to, to say no to. Um, but it's, uh, it's easy to say, all right, these guys have their stuff put together, they're represented very well. It's somebody that I could either, uh, I would want to go live there or it's a place that I could bring my, my business. Um, but it is an important time, uh, moment in time for Buffalo Grove. Uh, as you go through these branding projects, you're able to define and own your distinct story. We're here not to change anything about Buffalo Grove. We're not here coming in and saying, tear this down and tear this down and you guys need to be branded as the capital of this. But really we're here to try to uncover what already exists here and, and help that shine. We do want to reflect the village's plan by embracing the history, but also setting up for the future. Uh, and as you have that, uh, that cohesive message or that universal message, you're able to professionalize the municipal government and it helps build confidence, reinforce actions, and support some policy. And then it also positively influences the residents, gives everybody something to rally behind, to get behind, uh, whether that's old residents, new residents, prospective residents, businesses, investors, and uh, visitors. So um, what we have here is a, a tool for helping reach your preferred future, and again, trying to figure out what is that preferred future. And that's why our whole umbrella plan is doing this uh, to figure out what exactly we want to be. 
But a new brand, uh, what we're trying to figure out is what is distinct or authentic or ownable about the village of Buffalo Grove. What, uh, what sets you guys apart from anywhere else in the lake or Cook County or the region or from all of Chicagoland? What can't be replicated? What do you guys do better than anybody else? What do you really hang your hat on? And the new brand should be both authentic, but a little aspirational too, uh, for who you are, where you have been, but also as we look ahead, what do we want to be? Um, it should be both authentic and aspirational. So as I mentioned, we do have the experience to help Buffalo Grove stand alone. Uh, we're based in Jacksonville. We've done this, I mean, we need to update this map. We have a few more dots to throw on here. Uh, we've done this in 250 communities, and so it's kind of nice to, uh, you know, as we've worked with several other communities that are anywhere from 40 to 50,000 people, we see what similar similarities exist in, in Arizona or, or Kentucky or Florida or Georgia and see what has worked for some of those other communities, and we can bring those to, this, to the forefront here and say, here's, some, here's a whole bunch of recommendations, or here's what hasn't worked out, maybe stay away from these type of things and just kind of help guide through that process. So your brand is what people say about you when you're not around. Or if you're having a dinner party and you go into the kitchen to get some more refills or get something else, what everybody else is now saying quickly while you're up, uh, that's your brand, uh, what people are saying about you. But branding is what you do about it. But uh, branding has a branding problem. As I'm sure maybe some of you are here tonight because you just hear the word branding and you think, hold on, What's going on? Who's branding me and what are they doing? Like you get a little bit uh, protected maybe. Um, but a good brand means that you never have to justify your prices. And again, this needs to be updated too because you can't get a couple of coffee <laughs> anywhere, let alone Starbucks. Uh, you don't even have to write your name with a strong brand. And as you look at all of these, uh, you can see, all right, I, have, I recognize that logo. Sure, that's Nike, but what else does it mean? What other memories has that helped you invoke? You know, what uh, what sporting events or or what things have you watched uh, your kids or grandkids or you know going to some uh, some professional sports? Like, there's a whole lot more to this than just yeah, that's Nike. It, it really has a, a feeling. Or a strong brand means you don't have to explain yourself. Brands like Google or Kleenex or Crayon, uh, those are strong brands that uh, that um, are, are very very recognizable. A great brand signals who's the best. And it gives you a public face. You can take away, I mean, you can even take away the, the, the red shirt and khakis, and you still know exactly who that is. You take away everything else, all the colors, and sure, that's Jake. Of course I know him. It gives you a competitive edge, that strong brand. And it's a legacy that endures. So when you see this brand, of course you see Disney, but when you think of that, are you thinking of the theme parks? Are you thinking of the movies? Are you thinking of, of some toys or experiences? And that's what we, we want to invoke in people as they see the new Buffalo Grove brand. We want them to say, well, that's not just a logo, but what, uh, what are my experiences that I've had with Buffalo Grove? Or who are the residents there? And I'm able to quickly understand uh, uh, exactly what it is. So some more kind of branding questions. Uh, all of these are, are it's two goods. But would you rather take a beach vacation in Maui or the Florida Gulf, uh, Florida Gulf Coast? Both good, but very different. Same thing, would you rather sample fine wine in Sonoma or the Finger Lakes? And there is a brand with each of those. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with the four P's of marketing. Uh, product, place, price, and promotion. In community branding, it's a little bit different. It is passion, 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 passion. And that's exactly why you guys are here tonight. You have a lot of passion for Buffalo Grove. You're protective of the brand. You want to have the best things uh, put forward. You want to put the best foot forward. Uh, and, uh, and, and so it, that's why we do these type of open houses or community forums. We want to hear from truly the passionate members of the community and get their input to help guide us as to what the brand should be. So generally, communities become more competitive and see improvement in their overall reputation when all the main sectors of a community are aligned to a common strategy. So when everybody's aligned to that common strategy, but also utilizing the same playbook and even utilizing some of the same visuals, everything goes together to just really, uh, you become more competitive. You do see improvement. You see a lot more of that 
uh, morale throughout the entire village uh, elevated as well. This, I mean, Buffalo Grove is already a very nice place to live. Uh, it's a phenomenal place. But if we can, uh, you know, have all the different departments and entities speaking from that same wheelhouse and, and just everybody rallying behind it, just think of how much stronger and better it could be. So there's a, a few more studies that have been done over in Europe with place making, place branding than there has been over here in the US. But some of the things that have been noted are there's an increased competitiveness, so resulting in, in a positive impact on investment, jobs, inhabitants, residents, visitors, and events when you have uh, some cohesive branding. Uh, you see a higher return on investment in both real estate, infrastructure, and events. Uh, and then, of course, that trickles down to all the, uh, to the restaurants, the goods, the services, everything else that's here. Um, it, it all trickles down and has that higher return on investment. You have a coherent city development as the physical, social, economic, and cultural aspects combined to deliver the brand promise or DNA. And we'll share, uh, we'll share an example of that DNA uh, later on in a minute. Um, but there is also pride in the city as residents, businesses, and institutions experience a new sense of purpose and direction, and we all rally together uh, and move forward uh, towards that. So our process looks a little bit like an hourglass. The top half of that hourglass is all uh, stakeholder and community education, which we're doing tonight, but then also inside gathering and research. We do a whole lot of research, both inside and outside of the community. It kicked off on uh, yesterday morning, uh, where we're doing a whole lot of uh, focus groups, one-on-one -on -one interviews, and that's with uh, community members. But then we'll also, as Molly alluded to, we'll have a community survey uh, for everybody that we're not able to actually speak to. We do still want community input, as this is a community brand. Later on, we'll also do an external survey. So we'll survey people all the way into Chicago and somewhere north, figuring out how far does Buffalo Grove's perception go and reputation, and what is that reputation? What do people outside of Buffalo Grove know? And then we'll also talk with other city and village management and leadership and neighboring communities, We'll talk with other chambers of commerce or economic development groups throughout the region, again, to figure out what's BG doing well, what is it not doing well, what does it need to improve on, or uh, what is that perspective, that perception, and what experiences do people have with Buffalo Grove. So we truly try to leave no stone unturned, and we take all of that information, and we boil it down into a long, run-on sentence that we have as the DNA uh, and strategy formation that basically says this is who and what Buffalo Grove is, and this is why it matters, this is why you should care, and this is what you get out of it. And that's kind of our strategy as we, lead, as we head forward and move into some of those uh, brand and messaging development. It might be a new logo, might be a tagline, uh, some new colors, some brand elements like that. Um, and, uh, and we want to be so secure in the research to try to take some of the subjectivity out of the creative elements because if we, if we heard loud and clear this point in the research, we would hope to, to show that uh, in, in some of the brand development. But then the big thing here, too, is the brand action ideas. When we turn over the final report to Molly and to the village, it'll have a whole host of ideas of how to bring this new brand to life. So we're not just saying, here's some visuals, go and do with it what you want, but we'll have 20, 30 pages worth of information of, uh, of how to bring this new brand, whatever it is, to life. Whether it's events or initiatives, grassroots efforts, just really things that everybody can get behind uh, and, and enact this new brand. So I want to share an example, and Chad's going to walk us through an example here of, uh, of a place called Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, just a few hours away from here maybe, but it's, a, it's an edge city to Madison, Wisconsin. Similar to how you guys are, um, they're much closer to Madison, they actually share a border uh, to Madison, Wisconsin, but still an edge city, most of the people live there, work elsewhere, uh, very similar to, uh, to here in Buffalo Grove. Uh, hello everyone, uh, thank you all for coming, we really appreciate it. Um, I get to do the fun stuff now and show all the really cool things we do. Um, so some of the examples, as he said, this is going to be for um, Sun Prairie. This is an example of the DNA statement. So we start off, target audience, families wanting some room to grow in the upper Midwest, frame of reference, Sun Prairie, rising to the northeast of Madison, get some people, frame of reference in their location. A point of difference, celebrates all things endearing and fun from Jimmy in Georgia to midget cars and corn. Jimmy is their groundhog, they celebrate Groundhog Day. Georgia O'Keefe is from, uh, from Sun Prairie and Midget Cars. 
the small little cards that they face from Amazon that they're known for. So they leaned into that quirkiness a little bit. Um, and the benefit, it welcomes everyone to come as you are and enhance our collective future. Very accepting community, they welcome everyone. But then this DNA statement that we've come, everything we do then reverts back to that. You know? So we always keep this in mind, DNA statement for whichever community you're working with. We sort of re um, goes back to that. Um, so here is their logo that we created. Um, Sun Prairie revolves around you. Um, we took this idea of prairie and the sun, kind of rotated it, twisted it, because they're, you know, they're a little quirky, you know? And then the idea of the sun, hey, you know, this area, we're gonna revolve, revolve around you. You're gonna be the focal point of the community. And then here are a couple of examples of it used for some of their other co-brands that are downtown, use the O in there, the visit for their tourism, and then the economic development. So these are all three separate logos, but they all tie together. There's some continuity there. It ties it all together through the colors, the shapes, the logo mark, etc. And then this is what we usually call a look. In a sense, it's kind of a mock-up of a magazine ad where we show the logo, typography, um, photographs, uh, you know, different color palettes, different design elements, etc. And on this one, there's a little, see, a little triangle right there, basically showing you, you know, like a sundial, you know, rotation. Again, tying it back to revolves around you. So again, we always think that DNA statement and we try to reference that. Um, here's some signage that we created for them, um, mocked up. This could be something that works in daytime. Also at nighttime, it could be lit up. So, you know, we think through these processes. Um, that's something, you know, Buffalo Grove, you know, could you know, use some signage, you know, so we think through those processes. This would be something given out to, say, the Economic Development Board, you know, businesses, you know, reasons to come, benefits, et cetera. But again, it has that same look and feel of the overall brand. Some vehicles, utility vehicles, again, bringing in some of those elements from the logo. But this is also, it's a chance for them to brand throughout the community. You know, there's trucks driving around, show the brand. Hey, put the tagline on the back there, Revol revolves around you. And then the more people see that, familiar with it, engaged with it. An example of some collateral, letterhead, envelope, business cards, but even the binder clips. They don't have to be plain black binder clips. You have a brand, you have some bright colors. Let's have some orange binder clips in there. You know, so there's a lot of different ways you can activate your brand without just it being a logo. Again, they can lean into the quirkiness. They have the Sweet Corn <laughs> Festival. Um, so, you know, and then they lean into it. It's a big, huge event there. You know, there's tons of corn trucked in. Um, you know, people, what is it, they pour salt on it? Is that yeah. the sweet corn that they pour salt on? I've never had it myself, but uh, hey, I give it a try. And then again, bottom right hand corner, the logo, you know, down there again, re emphasizing that brand, showing it over and over. And then here's some other options too. So they have this town square. Know, drop the logo in there, but then also there's other ways you can use it too. You pull out these elements, you know, these little lines here and their color and so on on the crossover. So there's multiple ways to engage and use that brand to show off your community. Idea of a park, you know how a park could be branded? It doesn't just have to be you know, an entry sign. You can create so many different things, you know, just a little bit of creative thinking, you know. That's what we really want to do is provide some ideas of how the brand can be utilized and engage the community. Um, so now we're going to ask some questions, you know, maybe to your thoughts and hopes for Buffalo Grove as a community, as a brand. Um, and so with that, do you have any questions for us? Yeah, and before, yeah, before we jump into questions too, uh, I do just want to call out, we've created a site called AuthenticBG.com where you can learn a little bit more about the project, share with other people, uh, there's also a button where you can uh, sign up to become a brand ambassador or be notified when a survey becomes available or be notified when the brand is all complete and how you can be a part of it and how you can help bring it to life. Uh, but yeah, I wanted, wanted to ask as well, what are your thoughts and hopes for the Buffalo Grove brand? What questions do you guys have for us and maybe what is uh, authentic or distinct to, uh, to the BG area? Yeah, please. Earlier about surveying and asking other people about what Buffalo Grove, what 
the images now. How are you going to get those people that found in the city? Are you email them, call them? I mean, if someone called me for a survey, how would you get the people, and what do you expect from that? Yeah, so there's a couple different uh, elements to that. So when we do the survey, we have a third-party survey provider who has panels all across the U.S. where people sign up to take surveys, uh, and so we tap into them, we give them the survey, they they have, I mean, tens and hundreds of thousands of people signed up. So it, it's pretty easy, especially just in Chicago, not too far. Uh, it's very easy to get people to fill out the surveys there. When it comes to those conversations with, uh, with other elected officials or neighboring communities. We do a lot of uh, cold calling, emails, we do a lot of follow-ups, um, but uh, but we found this to be really successful and helpful is when the communities that we're working with can introduce us to some of those people. Uh, that just goes a long way when you say, I know Troy over here, uh, you know, can I give you an introduction, set us up, and then yeah, we'd to take a phone call. But otherwise, we just do a Google search for those uh, for the competing communities, look to see who's right around, or might be a comparable city, and, uh, and I just do emailing and cold calling. Google has a question. Have any other municipalities in your area been granted? Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, either have been branded or are in the process of being branded, yes. Um, one that we're currently working with is Woodstock. Illinois, so a little bit further northwest. Uh, so I see some of you guys nodding your heads. You already have an idea of the reputation or, or what that brand means. Um, but then we've also done uh, Lake Geneva. Also, yeah. And Schaumburg. So we have done a few. And sorry, our, our website is North Plate, or excuse me, North Star Ideas. Uh, we have a whole list of, of communities that we've worked with already. You can see some of the case studies, uh, some of their expanded uh, portfolio, more so than just, just the logo that was created, but you can see and read about what their unique need was or why they felt it important to go through this branding initiative and, and ultimately what they got out of it. As you're going through these branding exercises, uh, how far back do you look historically? I mean, the village, in some terms, is, is very young, but at the same time, we have a pretty long history. Yeah. Uh, going back to the 1800s. Yeah. In some cases. Um, what do you find that works when, when you're doing these panels? Yeah. Um, I can speak to this one. Uh, we like to get a pretty holistic view of communities that we work with, um, and that means delving into history that maybe predates the founding of the town, predates incorporation, um, but as uh, Sam mentioned and as Chad showed with Sun Prairie, what's uh, also a, a part and parcel of that strategy formation is that we need to give you something that is true for you today. And it has to be long living, as is, you know, relatively, right? So uh, there are certain things that we can expect BG to grow into, and there are certain possibilities that we might exclude, right? You're not going to become a city of 200,000 uh, and be, be classified, right? Um, so we, we form all of our strategies with the present in mind, with a little bit of that aspiration projection forward, so sort of you do have the room to grow um, as you, know, you are expected to do in the next two decades. I've been living in this town for 53 years, and I've been around watching branding discussed twice before at least. Uh, the thing that I notice about Buffalo Grove is when something's going on, you don't get a lot of participation. Do something wrong, and you get a lot of participation. And I'm thinking about, uh, the last thing I can remember is the town center. 
then I remember before that, the uh, make a downtown out of the golf course, and there are a few other things that happened. One of the things that really sticks in my mind is we have a 25 mile an hour speed limit in this town because we filled the village hall with people who cared about that. Because the village staff said 30 miles was great because it keeps the traffic moving out of Buffalo Grove. And we said yes, but at that time we had, I think, two deaths caused by traffic accidents in the village. And we said 25 miles an hour is better particularly when you have towns all around us that use 25 miles an hour. Well, we were told at the meeting that uh, they'd think about it. My understanding is that at that point in time, Adam in the back can probably justify what I'm saying. The village president at that time said, I don't care what, what the answer is, I don't care what your feeling is, we're going to have a 25 mile an hour speed limit. And that's what happened. What happens uh, mostly is when the residents start to feel that the people who are running the village are very transparent. And as soon as the transparency starts to be questioned, that's when the responsibilities and the activity picks up. So I would assume, uh, you're probably not gonna hear an awful lot about branding in this particular exercise until you do something and say, here's what we wanna do. And if people don't like it, this room will be full of people and it will be standing room only. So I'm just telling you, you better be careful. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and appreciate that heads up. Um, and Buffalo Grove isn't unique to that. Every community that we work with, and you mentioned the four P's as passion, especially in much smaller communities with maybe, with maybe 12 to 15,000 people, that's when the flames and the pitchforks really come out. Uh, they're very protective of their communities, as you guys are too. Uh, so our process is very transparent. We will share the research. We will, you guys will have access to that research and strategy. We'll also be coming back another time to get some more input that directly correlates to some of those creative decisions. Uh, but it is a community brand, and it should be reflective of the community and get that community input. And there are still a lot of people who live in this town since we're a two-county town. The Cooks, a lot of Cook County residents think they're second-class citizens. And they make that comment quite frequently. I don't ever make that comment because I'm a Cook County resident, but I have just, it's been unbelievable how many people say, I live in Cook County, so please listen to me. Or um, I know uh, I live in Cook County, but uh, I do have something good to offer and things like that. So somewhere along the line, we gotta get that mentality changed. Yeah. Um, we gotta be Buffalo Grove and not, I'm Cook County and I'm Lake County, Buffalo Grove. And, uh, there are uh, quite a few people um, who at one point in time thought that Buffalo Grove was a Cook County only town because we started in Cook County and then the expansion took place in Lane County. And at some point in time, I had heard a comment from a politician up north, but they said, you ought to be going to Buffalo Grove and talking to the residents there if you want to get reelected. And he said, I'm not going to a Cook County community to talk about my, my office because I live in Lane County. Didn't realize that 75% of the population is in Lake County, you know. Now he knows that now, but, <laughs> so, uh, and, and when you look at the stuff that comes out of the local area, when I say that in Chicago, and you, you watch the weather on TV, and they show you the weather map, and they show all the towns. Very rarely do they show Buffalo Grove on the map. And uh, part of the problem is because we're engulfed by Arlington Heights, I guess you could say. But, uh, you know, so, there aren't, there aren't too many people who know where Buffalo Grove is. We moved into Buffalo Grove in 1970, and one of the first things we found that if you found the right people, they knew a lot about Buffalo Grove. At that point in time, Buffalo Grove was famous for the Schwaben Center, the soccer team. We were in the city of Chicago, on, on Lincoln and Lawrence, somewhere around there, German neighborhood, and we were looking for furniture. We told them we were moving to Buffalo Grove, and I'm telling you, there wasn't one person there who didn't have a 15 minute dissertation about Buffalo Grove and soccer. And they also talked about the Buffalo House and the chicken dinners that they used to have on Sundays. And, and people came in from Chicago to go there. So we don't have that anymore, and I don't know why, but we got Malnati's instead in the, the Buffalo House. But uh, so things have changed. 
Uh, I moved to Buffalo Grove because I was working at Allstate, and one of the guys I worked with said, if you're looking for a little nice town, not a lot of people have heard of it, it's right near Wheeling, called Buffalo Grove, you know, I look at that. And that's how I, I became a resident of Buffalo Grove. And, and to your point, of kind of that divide of Cook County, Lake County, um, that is why we are doing this. We're trying to uncover some of the similarities that exist between both sides of the county want something that everybody can get behind and everybody can be well behind. So that is, yeah, we are part of it. Back in the, in the 70s, uh, the, uh, the community organizations were really the driving forces in the village of Buffalo Grove. I was in the JCs for umpteen years, and JCs did a lot of stuff at the beginning that but the village took over. We ran Buffalo Grove Days. And there, was, there was no Buffalo Grove Days committee for it's the JCs who ran it and stuff like that. We built parks and we did stuff like that. And uh, we can't even have a JC organization here because when we tried to get members, nobody wanted to join the JC. And we got answers like, my husband doesn't want to join the JC, he's a professional man. You know, so uh, that's part of the reason I think that things change. The clientele, so to speak, changed in the village. in Lake County. I moved here a couple, couple years ago, probably two, and um, I live in Cook County, so if you want to know the difference between Cook County and Lake County, just go to the parks, because um, anything in Lake County, they have gorgeous parks, and in Cook County, our parks look pathetic. I've been working with the park district, asking frequently for garbage cans, because we live across from Orange Park, and we have we requested new garbage cans, and they sent us garbage can you can imagine. And I had a face-to-face -face meeting with him for a good 35, 40 minutes on the property at Lions Park. I said, why can't we get the same garbage cans that they have in Lake County, the spokes, the wooden spokes? He said, we don't do things like that. We're not an HOA can. So I said, okay, fine. We did get a few shrubs along the way. And I didn't mean to put it, you know, that's just, I didn't mean to put it in that. I'm sorry. But um, that was just a conversation we had, so it's being honest. But, um, you know, we love our little community. We moved here a couple years ago, like I said, for personal reasons, and we're really enjoying it. Sorry to be negative. Thank you. No, no, we're here, we're here to learn from you all, and so we appreciate all of you. You're here to your experiences. It may be two counties, but it really is one vision. So, Lake County had more land, and that's really all. Leon's right. It's, it, we, we kind of, there are times when people see it, but they forget that it's still Buffalo Grove, and it is just one vision for the for the village. That's all. town center issue, right? It was supposed to be one thing, it didn't mm -hmm. take so long. Um, and then we had the downtown golf course issue, right? We all lived through that and understand it. But I do want to give staff a lot of credit for what we learned from that, because out of that came like a quarter project, which now turned into the club, the largest redevelopment in our village's history. And that's because for a year, everyone came out and talked about what they want in town center. And so the ask tonight for all of us, everybody, is share everything, don't pull this bar, because that's how we get the best outcome, right? That's how we got the club. We went, we wrote it, and then we sold it, and we found a developer who would make it, right? And that's what we're trying to do here. So it's you know, appreciation of everyone who's out here tonight, and to link you know, any good contacts for these folks to interview, because that's how we're gonna get good answers. My feeling is that 91% of the people who live in Buffalo Grove have absolutely no idea about what's going on here. And I used to say 90% until I saw some of the comments that were made about when the, the club was being pre presented for development and people got up there and said, Buffalo Grove's not a wealthy enough community to have 
uh, fancy apartment building going up there, things like that. And I said, well, I guess it's 91% of people here don't know what's going on. Because they don't understand that the, supposedly the household income in Buffalo goes $117,000 a year. That sounds to me like a pretty wealthy community. And, uh, but they're saying it's not. So somewhere along the line, I don't, I don't know, I have any idea how you do it. The word's got to get out. And people have to understand it. And uh, but there's an awful lot we don't. They're not here, are they? <laughs> yeah, and so when, when the community survey does become available, uh, we'll, of course, lean on, on Molly, communications team, communications <coughs> department. But then we're also going to look at, uh, at the school districts and PTOs and libraries and uh, every single different the parks department. We're really trying to lean on every single department or group that might have an email database for residents and trying to get that word out. And we'll leave the survey open for four to six weeks so that there's ample time to hear from people. Uh, and hopefully, you know, they'll have gotten hounded to take the survey at least two, three, or four times and, and really actually take it and learn more about it. Is it something you can put on Facebook? Or yeah. So we'll share it on all of our channels. And the more that all of you can share it with your contacts, because you may be part of each one, or something that could send it up to their email list. We don't have a, a contact list recently with the clove and the naming of it and different things. But um, I like to look at the positive. So um, I just want to share that um, my son and daughter-in-law and two kids live in Maryland, and they wanted to move here, and they only wanted a house in Buffalo Grove. They looked online, bought a house without seeing it. They're still in Maryland. They closed on the house, and I'm going every day to get mail and see how the painters are doing. And then they're coming here July 1st because they wanted a house in Buffalo Grove. And other people around here said, oh, we'll check Deerfield. And, and I have a son in Deerfield, but you know, check this town, check that town. And my daughter-in-law, who does a lot of research online, I don't, but she does. And she said she checked everything, and she wants to live in Buffalo Grove. So they bought a house without seeing it, and what did they want to be? Yeah, were they raised here? Well, I live here, <laughs> so that's a babysitter for the grandkids. Um, I like living here. And, and I moved here at the time I was living in New York, and I moved here 21, 22 years ago um, because I had gotten a teaching job at Stevenson, so I was teaching there at the time. And, um, and I like it here. Um, then they lived here in Deerfield for several years and then moved to Maryland. Um, but she felt it was more community. She felt um, the diversity, she liked that. Uh, there was a, a, miss, a mix of people. Um, she felt that um, there were good schools, uh, obviously, we all know that. Um, and the price point at the time she was looking, although they paid a lot of money, crazy, because, because the prices are high right now, and the interest is high, and it was crazy, and, and they just needed a house, because my son already started the job here and was flying back and forth. They like the parks, because when they do come here, I take my grandkids to the park all the time. Um, we're part of this library. I'm at this library two or three times a week, and I bring them here to do things here at the library, and then we go out and play at the playground. Um, you can walk around, you can bike around. Um, Buffalo Grove Days is lovely, you can feel safe. There's so many good things, but yet there's people that um, find fault. And, and I guess it's okay, it's free speech and everything, but, but 
but I don't know. It's not perfect, but it's good. It's good. And if I were going to move and come from somewhere else, I would pick Buffalo Grove again. I like it. A um, lot of restaurants, a um, lot of, I don't know, it's just, it's just, it feels comfortable and it feels like home. I, do, I, do, I like being outdoors. The neighbors, I walk outside, we all talk, we all walk around during COVID. We walk on different sides of the streets and we wave. And I, don't, I, I just feel good here. Um, but they went online, saw a house, and they have called a realtor here and, and said, walk through with Facebook, let me see. Okay, it's good. Put a bid. Bid the high, at highest, we want the house. And then they came for the closing. I'm like, I hope you like the house. You know, um, so now it's being painted and they're uh, packing up and going to come here. So so it's good. I just wish more people would um, see some of the positives because there's a lot yeah. for young families. I just want to tap on what you were saying, yeah. and what this gentleman was saying is there are a lot of people who find fault in Buffalo Grove days, or they find fault with this, and find fault. but where are they? They're sitting behind their computer in their house. Why are they not part of this group, or part of all these other fantastic committees, right? It's easy to criticize, right? But yet, where are you? What's going to make you stop complaining? Just think about that. You're going to have a hundred million complainers, but yet until they get involved and see what it takes to put out Buffalo Grove Days. I was on the committee for five years. It takes a lot. It does. A lot of people, a lot of time. Volunteers. Right? You need volunteers. You need the volunteers to make yeah. this happen. Yeah. And yet, you're going to criticize my work. You're not doing anything. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I've sacrificed for this community. I'm going to do what I think is right because you're not anywhere near here. So my thing is, if, you don't, if you're going to complain, you better be on the committee. Otherwise, you have no right to complain. The secret is, a big, big comment we have, we have, you know, the snow plowing. Which streets Buffalo Grove plows and which street Buffalo Grove doesn't plow? And every year, there's umpteen announcements made, Buffalo Grove doesn't do state roads, it doesn't do count. And every year, on social media, all the complaints come out. That's why I'm not on social media, because there are a bunch of idiots on social media. Yeah, just yeah. quickly, uh, volume doesn't equal numbers. There's a lot of loud people on the elected person here or social media, but you have to take into account that simply the loudness of the people or your anger doesn't mean that's the majority of people or even a, necessarily a significant percent. So, yeah, absolutely. Are we doing like a new logo and a new tagline as well? Uh, possibly. Uh, that's still kind of TBD. Uh, okay. There will be some research about the, the strength or the, the equity of the Alder that exists in the brand. Um, but uh, the seal that exists within Buffalo Grove, that we always recommend that never go away. Uh, so that would just be elevated to a different status, to be a little bit more official, uh, live within, within the boardroom, that type of thing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that is something that we are looking at. So there would be possibly a new logo and a new tagline that could quickly tell that logo story. That's simple, elevator speech. Yeah. Are you looking for people to sign your should be, but what things should we take into consideration to get that to spot? it? Okay. So are we going to have like another meeting to there, discuss that? There will be, uh, probably right around uh, PG days uh, is when we would likely come back out, share a brief portion of the research, some highlights, but then also go a little bit further into some of those creative executions that people Um, yeah, I just have a few um, comments about that. Um, I'm, I'm a university student, so I'm not going to be here in September for that. Um, but the latest rebranding effort I saw in the nearby municipality was um, Northbrook. And um, like I saw it on the Buffalo Grove patch, and I talked about it with my friends. And we, we all hated it because 
Um, they had a really, it was a little antiquated, but it was, um, it had potential. There, it was their old seal that had the village hall on it. It was like a beautiful stone building with ivy. And they could have built a lot with it, but instead they went with this like, this really weird curvy and It was like really like corporatized and like soulless. Um, so I just want to, I mean, I've been, um, what you've talked about in your presentation and the um, answers to the other questions by the residents have been promising, but I beg of you, please don't do that to Buffalo Grove. Mm -hmm. I, I, I do really like the seal. In fact, um, when um, the village changed its social media um, profile picture to have the, um, have the seal be blue instead of orange, um, I was actually disappointed in that because I feel like my whole life, I kind of saw Buffalo Grove as like kind of just in the middle of things. It wasn't very special on its own. Drive by towns get either underlying Lincolnshire, um, Arlington Heights, and orange is kind of like our unique color that you know, it's like no other village or municipality is orange. And it's the one thing that kind of made us stand out. Um, so I guess I, I, I appreciate. Um, seems to be a commitment to um, keeping in mind the village's history and its existing aesthetic. Um, and on another note, I'd also like to give um, a few ideas about what I think as um, a 21-year-old, 20 you know, no offense, not really representative here, <laughs> um, about my thoughts about the village brand. I mean, obviously, the branding will have to overcome some cleavages. There's, you know, the divide between the counties. I, I'm a park district employee. My sense of the divide between the park district and the village itself, the you know, separate um, political entities. Um, so there's that. But I also think um, the overarching um, characteristic of Buffalo Grove is the community. Like, while we may not have super good town center, which we're working on. But, um, there have been a lot of um, grassroots initiatives to bring you know, community together. There's of course the Buffalo Grove Days, there's the Pinta Pride Project and the UPS event. Um, in my subdivision, Strathmore, there was a, uh, like during COVID, there was one of our neighbors who would like, um, he, he um, rent food trucks and you know, served the community. So, I really think that should be represented in our brand. It's, it's really, Buffalo Grove is a really people-driven place. And another thing, I think our history is important. We are a pretty old town, you know, founded by a, um, we were a farming community by, founded by dairy farmers. And we have a lot of old buildings and history in this town that I think is underappreciated, though I am a history major in university, so. third characteristic that I want to emphasize is Buffalo Grove has been, um, I think it's been making good leaps in the, um, in the way of natural beauty and biodiversity, like um, behind Village Hall. Now there's a bioswale and butterfly garden. There's been, um, in Willow Street Park, a um, restoration of the, um, of the prairie by um, Barrington Hitch, um, and also, we have the beautiful Buffalo Creek Nature Trail. And um, yeah, I think that should really be that represented in our brand. And the nature garden. That's a big logo. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, not just no, brand, I know. Just, yeah, I know. Holistically as a brand. Yeah. I hear you. That's, it, you know, that's just what I think as um, a young Buffalo Grove resident. Sure. I think, I, mean, I hope that's. Yeah, I appreciate that. that. What you saw, what you saw in that Sun Prairie logo, uh, there's a whole lot more to that logo than just you know the sun and the prairie on the side. Uh, but it speaks to the growth and the energy and the uh, the diversity and, and the equality that they're really trying to push. So you know, bringing everybody to come as they are. So there's a whole lot to jam into just the logo, and that's why we always say our brand is a whole lot more than just a logo. So the way that we speak about the 
way that we, we talk about it, the things that we show, it all ties into the brand. <coughs> Definitely. So, so how do we take all of that? It's very hard. How do we take all of that and, and you know, boil it down into one set of visuals? It's a tall task for sure. Any other thoughts or questions? Uh, yeah, you guys have all done a great job uh, of just kind of addressing some of those highlights of the whole book. But, but I'm interested too, um, what is your, your favorite part? Or scratch that, we'll do this one instead. If you could only show me one image of Buffalo Grove, you've taken a lot of photos throughout the village here. If you could only show me one picture that says this is who and what Buffalo Grove means to me, what would that picture be? Residential tree line street. Okay. That kid's playing in one of the picture books. Yeah. I'll say one way or another, it has to be green, right? So we have those gorgeous bridges in Buffalo Creek that we change the sunset in the morning. We have great bike paths, right? We have wonderful tree line streets. I came here in part because I fell in love with the tree line street, right? And so all of these things, I think, resonate around. I think it's really interesting how they put along the street a bunch of different trees of different kinds, not just all one kind of tree. It rotates uh, just sporadically different trees. And also I thought what's interesting was all the parks in Buffalo Grove, they have different activities, like there's uh, pickleball, there's um, Frisbee golf, you know, different activities that a lot of parks don't have. A lot of parks have maybe swings or slides, but there's also tennis courts. Um, there's there's, there's storybook homes. Story, story yeah. And you can walk around that park yeah. and do exercise on different pieces of equipment as you're walking. And they 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 are building something new uh, next to skate park. Skate park, right? Yeah, it's a skate park. Yeah, skate park. No, next to that, I think a hockey rink or something like that. Cricket pitch, too. Yeah, cricket pitch. Oh, cricket pitch, too. Yeah, cricket pitch, too. Yeah. That's really what keeps everyone together. Yeah. A lot of outdoor stuff. Fishing. 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 Some re you know residents feel safer, I think, with street lights and sidewalks, especially when you have kids. You want them walking down the sidewalk, not on the street. A lot don't have sidewalks. Yeah, we yeah. don't have sidewalks. Yeah. We don't. Our kids Are you play in the, in the street. Are you in the uh, no, but nearby there. Yeah, and so we don't. We, our kids all play in the street, and we pull out these things in the street. These little structures with a flag, and we have signs go slow because they play in the street. I think 99% of them also grow up on sidewalks. Yes. So. That was yeah. Yeah. Like that, that's part of it. Oh, well, I live in a mistake. Right? <laughs> 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 you still love it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. You still have sidewalks on one side. No, we have not. You said those are not the only thing in zoning is insistent. No. Are you an unincorporated? No, I'm incorporated. Any, any other images? Uh, if you, yeah. What one of those lasting, iconic images? Buffalo Grove, what it is. There's visions from Buffalo Grove days. I mean, almost everybody has their own similar yeah. view. Uh, whether it be their kids trying to get on a ride or something, or just sitting down with friends. Sometimes Buffalo Grove day days are pretty fun. So, and it, you know, the younger people coming back from college. That tended to be a, a meeting place for everybody, uh, especially Friday night. Music, they had a lot of music there. They all get together and uh, yeah. everybody was uh, and, and caught up again to be, uh, not seeing each other. On like Tuesdays yeah. and Thursdays, don't we have a mess that around since those performers? It, it pretty, pretty much since it was incorporated. Anything else? Yeah. Any last thoughts or questions? Let's our concerts. In the park, and there's mm -hmm. movies in the park. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would be my picture too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's really just community events, 
people coming out together, celebrating together, being with one another. Yeah. There's a lot of that. that yeah. You know, within the book, in multiple areas of interest that people you know, that, that enjoy about the book, and so the enjoyment of the movies or the art or the concerts or things like that. There's, there's something where everyone can get into. And I know you guys are working on it, trying to even expand that. And so we're getting more diversity. Uh, and, 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 and you getting an opportunity for a plug for the events committee? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get more people in but, um, but the only thing that, and I've said this before, um, I pretty much know just about everybody here. <laughs> and it's the same few of us. We do a, we do a, a quick survey at Buffalo. So, you know, maybe we can just at least get more in. And, and I, I know with Lakewood Road, uh, we got a lot of in, but it took a lot of work to get that in. So. Again, the site authenticpg.com. Um, go on there, sign up to become a brand ambassador. If you think of anybody else that we need to talk to, we're, we're speaking with close to 70, 75 people while we're here in yeah. Buffalo Grove. We want to hear from hundreds more, right? Uh, maybe even a couple thousand throughout the community survey. But if there are additional phone calls or Zooms that we can do after we've gone back to Florida, uh, please put that in, that in the uh, link when you go to authenticpg.com. Tell us who we need to talk to. Give us some more insights, some more feedback, and then please be on the lookout for the community survey when it comes out in a couple weeks. Take it, share it, encourage people to take it and share it as well. We do want to hear from truly as many people as possible. So thank you again. Thank you all so much.